Brace yourselves and get comfy. This one's going to be a long one. So, inspiration. Where do I get my inspiration from? Well, in my local supermarket, there's an aisle. And I go down the aisle and there's a can that I buy. And inside it's full of ideas. Yeah. Only kidding. There's no, um, there's no place that you can go for inspiration. Any one place, anyway. Inspiration can be found everywhere. Inspiration is all around you in everything that um, you, you encounter. And you have to learn, I suppose to walk around with your eyes open because that's really where inspiration comes from it comes from seeing color schemes it comes from seeing patterns on somebody's dress it comes from seeing um, the shades of blue in the sky it comes from seeing the colors of plants in your garden or as you're walking it can come from absolutely anywhere you could be sat on the bus or the train or in a traffic jam and then all of a sudden, you'll see something that will spark your imagination or will spark that little bit of inspiration, give you a seed of an idea for you to bring home and then try and put something together. And I wish there was a magic pill that you could just take and all of a sudden you would be inspired to do something or you'd get an idea. But that's just not the way it works. Um, inspiration doesn't fall from heaven. It doesn't fly through the universe and hit you in the head. It's not a question of luck. It's a question of observation. And I think you have to be open to receiving those kind of ideas and those kind of thoughts through everything that you're looking at, through everything that you see, from colour schemes to patterns, to even flicking through magazines and that kind of stuff. You know, you can flick through a magazine and you can see a picture and think, oh, that's a really interesting image. I'm going to tear that page out and keep that and use that later because it would be great for an art journal page. It could be a phrase in a headline on a newspaper. It could be a quote that you hear. It, it could be a song title that you listen to or a song lyric that you hear on the radio or... Um, or something in a movie or a TV programme that you see. But again, it's all observation. And 99% of my inspiration comes from my environment. Uh, and it comes from the things that I see and I hear. Um, and, but also, I don't just necessarily let these things come to me. I go out there looking for them as well. Because there are products on the market that you can buy and this is one of them and this is a book filled full of inspiration and ideas so I buy these kind of things I've got three or four different books up on my bookshelves that I've already shown you on some occasions the Dina Wakely books are one and you can flick through and just fall on a page and that might give you an idea to create an art journal page of your own there's a thousand different places on the internet. You've got Pinterest. There's thousands and thousands, millions, if not, you know, millions and millions of thousands of photographs on there and quotes that you can tap into to help find something to create an art journal page with. And, and, and I wish there was an easy way for me to say, you know, that, that there is no magic wand. You have to put the work in. It's not just going to drop in your lap unless you are very lucky. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you'll just bump into something by accident. That is luck. But that's what inspiration is. It's seeing something that sparks in your head. But you can't just sit there and expect it to happen every day. You can't just sit there and expect when you open your art journal at an empty page that you're going to see 
an idea to work on. You know, don't open your art journal when you haven't got an idea because that's the worst thing you can do. Confronting a white page is probably one of the most terrifying things that anybody can, can come across, apart from moving house maybe. Um, whether you're a writer staring at a blank page or an artist staring at a blank canvas, you have to have some idea in your head where you want to go before you can start on that journey of creation. So fill yourself, surround yourself with inspiration. Cut out pictures from magazines. When you see or hear a quote, write it down on an index card and keep it in a box. And then when you're wanting some inspiration, flick through your box of quotes. I keep um, all my images that I've cut out from magazines in a folder. But also if I find an art journal page that I like the look of on the internet, on Pinterest or somewhere like that, I'll print a copy of that page and I'll keep it in a folder. And it might be a colour scheme, it might be a layout, it could be anything like that. That gives me the inspiration to start a page. So I wish, as I said, that there was a magic wand or a pill that you could take that would just give you that inspirational start to an art journal page or a project, but there just isn't one. You really have to um, have the idea, or it's better to have the idea before you sit down, rather than sit down and then expect something to come to you. But so like I said, surround yourself with images, surround yourself with quotes, surround yourself with colour, surround yourself with things that will get your imagination going. Keep your eyes open, watch your environment. It could be a bird, it could be an animal, it could be the wind blowing across the tops of wheat in a field, it could be the clouds flowing across the sky, it could be anything that could give you inspiration. But the trick is, is to be switched on and receptive to what you're seeing. And again, like I said, it could be anything in a magazine, in a book, it could be a song, it could be a play, it could be something from a film. It can be anything that will just flick that light bulb on in your head. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, what I want to do is I want to try and talk you through the individual steps of creation process, if you like, or the way that I do it. So for that, I need to switch over to my overhead camera. So I'm going to do that um, now. So this is the book that I was showing you earlier on. So it's Art Journal Kickstarter, and you can get this from Amazon, and it's available all over the place. And as I said, inside here, there are just tons and tons and tons of ideas for art journal pages. And this really is, it says pages and prompts to energise your art journal pages, but not just to energise, but to kickstart them too. So I just wanted to show you one particular page that I found in this. Now, I was just flicking through this um, this morning, wondering what I was going to show you, how I was going to create a page to help show you how I do it. And this page is from a, a lady called Jenny Moed Coppola, or Coppola. Um, and there are four examples of pages that she's created using images of birds. And I don't know whether she's actually painted these herself. Um, they possibly look like watercolours of birds she's painted. Now, I can draw birds or watercolour to this quality to save my life. So for me, if I wanted to create a page that had a similar sort of feel to this, or I was going to use these pages as a kind of basis for my idea, then I don't need to. Because I can find images, photographs of birds that I can use in an art journal page. Now it just so happens that recently, I was given some happy mail by a friend um, called Katie Marriott and what Katie had done is she'd cut, uh, this is from a calendar and this is the top part where the image is and the bottom part is where it has all the dates and all that kind of stuff and these are the top parts of the calendar and she literally just cut the calendar up and put all these images in an envelope 
and gave them to me. Now I have shown you these before on, ha on a Happy Mail video, but I just wanted to show it. Now my, my thought immediately went to, I've got some pictures of birds. And I, and I kind of pulled this one out as being one of my favourite images. Now this would work perfectly. As you can see, based on what Jenny has done in her page, I can use this as the basis for an art journal page. And as you can see on Jenny's pages, there are no real um, quotes or phrases that are used on the pages, but I love this phrase here. I love this quote that's here. It says, keep your, keep your heart open to the wonders of the world and you will always find something to be inspired by. Now, isn't that what I've just been talking about? So I'm not being profound. It's kind of common sense. You know, you've got to be open and receptive to what's around you to get that inspiration. So I'm going to use this as my quote for my art journal page for today. And I'm going to use this photograph. So let me put the book to one side now because that's it as far as that book's concerned. I'm done with it. I've got the quote, but I've got my main image. I've got my art journal. Now this is my 5x8 Dilusions small art journal and this fits just nicely on those pages there. Now I could either stick this down, cut it out, stick it down and then extend it or I can utilise the structure of the page, the fold, to have a transition point over to that side. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to keep the bottom but I'm going to cut the image out and then just lose the top and then I'm going to disguise this somehow. Now let me just put my art journal page and my art journal book to one side. So as far as colour schemes are concerned I'm going to take the colour scheme for my page from this main image. So in this main image I've got yellows on the bird, I've got black because we have black in his eye or her eye and you also have dark colours in the actual plumage but also we have pinks, whites and greens. So I've already got a colour scheme that I can use for the rest of this page. So we have yellow, in fact, let's list the colours just here, yellow, black, pink and green. So those are the colours that we're going to use in our art journal page. Okay, let's just put that to one side. Just keep that there. Now, as far as background elements are concerned, what I tend to do is I sit and look at the photograph for a few minutes and I try and absorb what's in that picture. What does this page, what does this image say to me? What am I looking at? What things come to me when I think about birds? Well, I think about birdsong and I think about music. So it would be nice to have somewhere in the art journal page to have some music. Now, I've already gone through um, <clears throat> my ephemera drawer, if you like, and I've pulled out two sheets of old music. And let me just have a look at the size that we have for these. So these are quite a good size. And literally, I can, using, once I've cut this out, I can overlay this on top. So I'm already beginning to see what I can use in the background of my page. I've already got my colour scheme. I've already got some background images that I can add. And I've got my main focal point. So before I go any further, I'm going to cut this image. And I'm just going to remove the top part with a pair of scissors and I'm not going to be too exact so I'll be right back when I've done that. So here's my little birdie image all ready and cut out so let's just bring that back onto the white page there. Now I've got it so it's lined up at the bottom now I probably will remove some of that later on. Now as you can see it does cut off slightly here and I've removed a little bit from the side of that branch there. 
So I need to find a way of being able to disguise this a little bit. And I think that's where the background music paper is going to come in because what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this into strips and I'm going to layer this. Put some on the top, then I'm going to put this over the top of that and then I'm going to use the other sheet, tear some more strips and then layer those on top of there so that the music comes in. So it looks as though this is both in front of and behind the music. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, tear this up into strips, stick these down onto my page using my trusty um, Mac Medium and I'll put some music on and then you can watch the process of me doing that. Okay, so we've switched into time-lapse. So this is about four times its normal speed. The entire process of this page will probably take about an hour and that's far too long to upload to YouTube. So as you can see, I'm just using the matte medium to glue down the fragments of that music paper. So it's time to look at the bird collage piece and I'm just making sure that I've got enough space around the edges and placing it on the page where I know it's going to work. Now you will see me waving my hands around because originally I did film this video in real time. So there will be some bits of hand waving. So I've added the matte medium to the page and I've also added it to the back of my collage piece and now I'm just gluing it down and sealing it onto the page, giving it a liberal coat over the top. And then I'm going to bring out my heat gun and give it a real good heat blast to make sure it's all nice and dry before adding the rest of those fragments of music paper over the tops of the edges to hide and disguise those straight lines at the edge of my collage piece. So just sticking down the last fragment of the music paper and then I'm going to bring out the heat gun and give it a blast and then we can move on and start adding some paint. So these are the paints, the yellow, the pink, the green, black and I've also introduced white because there is some white highlights on the, the flowers too. So as you can see I've just put some of the green paint down on my craft mat and I'm applying that as a first base layer with the baby wipe across the page and just going around clearing out any of the white areas and then just adding that base colour down. So at this point I'm happy with the amount of paint that's down but not necessarily happy with the actual depth of the colour. So I'm going to add a white wash with the white or the titanium white acrylic paint just across the page just to try and tone out some of that black music. Now you'll see me paint over with the white and then I'm going to probably add in the green again once that's dry so that it just knocks back all the um, the music as you will see. So I'm just going around the edges of the page making sure it's a little bit darker on the edges than it is in the centre of the page just to create a kind of depth frame. I will be adding some other paints over the top of this anyway so I'm trying to knock back that black from the music notes on the paper as much as I possibly can without losing it altogether and I find this is probably the best way to do it and introduce all those colours in and blend your focal image into the page background. 
once we introduce the yellow, so again, this is the Reeves Yellow Ochre paint. So I'm just going to add some flashes of the yellow into the background. And this then ties in the yellow from the bird into your background as well. So everything's all nice and cohesive. As I've said many times before, if you take the colours from your focal image and use those in your background, you really can't go wrong. After heat setting, I've decided not to add any of the black paint onto the page because there's enough black showing through from the musical notes um, for it to gel with the bird itself. So instead I'm using a blending foam with the white titanium white acrylic paint and I'm just going to create like a white wistful misty border all the way around the page using that titanium white paint. And then using some of the remnants on the sponge, I'm going to bring some of the white paint into the page and just create kind of like wisps of mist into the background too. So now we have the yellow, the green and the white in the picture. The only colour that's missing is the pink. So using the Reeves Rose Red acrylic paint and this quatrefoil stencil from that special touch, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the paint, then bring in a craft sponge, and then I'm just going to stencil um, just some areas of the pink very, very lightly around the double page spread. Now we have all of those colours, the green, the yellow, and the pink, and the white, in our background as well as in our focal point. For one of the finishing touches I wanted to add some more of the white detailing so I've brought out the Tim Holtz flourish stencil and I'm just going to add two areas of that white flourish on the page one on the left and then one on the top right so after a quick dry I'm going to bring out my Dymo letter tag label maker and I'm going to type out the quote that we've taken from that book and I'm just going to do it in four strips and then we're going to stick those strips down onto the left hand side of our page. And because we've got quite a lot of white in the page already, we've got white on the border, white with the flourishes and the white background for the quote blocks I didn't want to add a black box all the way around it I didn't want it to pop that much so I've, I've decided to go with a white pen and to add a white scribble border around my word quotes and then once that's complete all I have to do is just to sign and date it and this page is complete Well, I hope that's given you a little bit more insight into the thought processes of where I get my inspiration from and how I work out the colour schemes for a focal point that I've got that I want to use in an art journal page. Um, there's no real science behind it. It's literally just a case of looking around and being aware of your environment, being aware of what you've got and looking at your focal points and seeing what colours are in there that you can utilise in your pages to make it all hang together better. So hopefully you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, share with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. Thanks for sticking with me. I know it was a long one, but I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.